Hey guys, it's Miss Miklos, and in the lecture today, we're talking about graphing tangent. So we've already explored graphing sine and cosine, so we're really going to focus on tan for today. So I'm just filling in our values for sine. We learned um, in our last lecture, sine goes 0, 1, 0, negative 1, and then back to 0. And just a, to, a reminder that this is all based on the unit circle. Cosine, we know it goes 1, 0, negative 1, 0, and then back to 1. Now, for tangent, you guys may recall that tangent is y divided by x. We also can think of it as sine divided by cosine. So, some kind of weird things happen here. For 0, 0 divided by 1, we get not a laser. We get 0. For pi over 2, 1 divided by 0 is undefined, so I'm going to put a little dash there. And then I get 0, and then I get undefined, and then I get 0 again. And quite honestly, I don't know how the heck to graph this. So we're going to rely on some other angles that we've previously learned. I know pi over 6, our tangent there, is radical 3 over 3. I know pi over 4 has a tangent value of 1. And pi over 3 has a tangent value of radical 3. Okay, so those are all things that we can help that we can use to help us graph this tangent graph. So I'm skipping to number 2. I don't think we need to graph sine and cosine again. And I'm going to go ahead and plot out kind of our four points to the right like we did um, in our previous lecture. And this would be pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. And then I'm going to do the same thing to the left side, and that would be negative 2 pi, negative 3 pi over 2, negative pi, and negative pi over 2. Okay, I'm also going to go up one and to the left one, or up one and down one, I mean. So just based on the stuff we figured out, we had 0 when tan was 0. At tan of pi over 2, it was undefined, so what we're going to do is draw an asymptote. And then I noticed at pi, it was at 1. At 3 pi over 2, we had another asymptote. And at 2 pi, it was at 0. So I'm actually going to repeat that pattern over here on the left side, where it's alternating between an asymptote and 0. And at this point, we may be a little unsure how else to graph it, but um, if we kind of rely on the values that we found for tangent for pi over 6, pi over 4, and pi over 3, um, I notice those were points of like at pi over 4, which is halfway between 0 and pi over 2, it went up 1. And um, we had some other values in there that will be on our function. One thing we didn't really look at, if you find the tangent of negative pi over 4, let's just think about that for a moment. Okay, that would be in quadrant 4, and that would be 45 degrees. So our tangent would be negative 1, because I know all students take calculus, only cosine is positive. So I have a point down at negative 1. And what we would see as we continue to kind of figure out these values, okay, pi over 6 is around here, pi over 3 is over here, and they are all points on this line. Okay, so we're going to notice that that just kind of repeats again and again and again. You guys may notice that look, this looks really similar um, to our y equals x cubed graph, and in fact, it is pretty similar to that. So some things I notice on this graph, as opposed to sine and cosine, is that it appears that it repeats way more frequently. Okay, because I labeled the same amount as our normal graphs, and I see one, two, three, four, five basically graphs going on here. So our general characteristics are amplitude, and this time it really is in quotations because technically um, it's not the maximum height because it's going to continue to the right, but the amplitude is really going to tell us what that point is halfway between the origin and the asymptote. Okay, and we're finding that as the absolute value of A. The period is pi over B this time instead of 2 pi over B. And if a is less than 0, we're going to flip it. So let's look at number 3. 
So y equals 2 tan of 3x. So my amplitude here is going to be 2. The period is going to be pi divided by b, so pi over 3. I don't know why I put an equal sign. And then lastly, we would say that there is no flip on this one. So when we're graphing these problems, we're going to plot three points on the right and three points on the left. We need to label the asymptote, the period, and the amplitude. So I'm going to go ahead and plot these three points here. Okay, so I have one, two, three, one, two, three. The second one is always going to be whatever our period is. I know that the one that is closest is going to be wherever the asymptote is, and that is half of the period. So I found that it was pi over 6 by doing 1 half of pi over 3. Okay, and then I like going to the left because I really don't need to think. I'm just putting opposite values. Okay, and there's 2 and there's negative 2. So I'm plotting this. I know I have a point at 0. I'm going to draw the asymptote, then we're going to be at zero again, and then we have another asymptote. And I'm not going to label that third asymptote. We don't need to, and that's okay. Asymptote, zero, asymptote. Now what I would need to see, even though we're not going to label this, is that to the right it's going up to, to the left it's going down to. And then I'm going to connect those points. Okay, and that's going to continue on all three of these periods that I'm graphing. And I just want to remind us that our graph really isn't necessarily to scale um, because we are making up what we're labeling everything, but hopefully this gives us a good idea of how to graph tangent. So number four. Okay, first thing we're going to find once again is our amplitude. And amplitude is the absolute value of A, so I get that it's one. Our period is pi divided by 2. And this time we do have a flip because we have this negative out in front. So let's go ahead and label. Okay, so I plotted my points to the left and to the right, and I labeled them appropriately. I'm going to go ahead and plot my zeros and my asymptotes. Okay, and I know halfway between one, 0 and pi over 4, I'm going to go up 1. Just kidding. Since it's a flip, instead of going up 1, where do you guys think we're going to go? We're actually going to go down 1. So I have a point at negative 1, and to the right, I'm going to go up 1. So we can see that this graph is definitely a reflection over the x-axis. It is our tangent graph, but flipped. And there are three periods. Now we know that it continues forever to the right and to the left, but we are good with just graphing these. Okay, number five. Our amplitude here is two. Our period, and sometimes this can kind of throw us off, I know it's pi divided by b. Our b value here is one half. Okay, so I know x over two is the same thing as one half x. So pi divided by one half is two pi and there is no flip. So let's go ahead and label. Okay, so I labeled and put the asymptotes. I know um, to the right, halfway I'm gonna go up to, to the left I'm gonna go down to. And I'm going to repeat that in each of the three periods that we are graphing here. Okay, so just like sine and cosine, this is super repetitive. We're doing the same thing almost every single time. Final example, our amplitude here is 2, because remember, it is the absolute value. I do know, though, that it's going to be flipped. And the period is going to be pi divided by pi, which is 1. So that looks kind of strange, but that's okay. So we have everything plotted now. Since it is a flip, that means when I go to the right, I'm going to go down 2. To the left, I'm going to go up 2. And we are going to repeat that once again in every single period. 
So big thing for us with tangent is that we just need to remember that the way that we find the period is pi over b as opposed to 2 pi over b.